today we've got a special guest, Miss Robin Benacasa. Robin is a world champion adventure racer, San Diego City firefighter, a CNN hero, Guinness World Record holder, a 10-time Ironman triathlete, New York Times bestselling author, and founder of the Project Athena Foundation. Robin, thank you so much for joining us on today's show. Let me ask you this. How do you find the time to achieve such feats? Oh, my gosh. Um, well, <laughs> It's a matter of like putting 10 pounds of life into a five pound bag every day. But I think sure. a lot of us are doing that right now. That's right. Um, I think a lot of it, if you have like these goals and dreams and you have finish lines you want to get to and you have a higher sense of, of purpose for your why, um, you know, the time doesn't even matter. You just make it work. You fit it in. You know, you, you keep running until you get to those finish lines. And, sure. and I have a lot of them. So. You know, I'm sure uh, your listeners do too, and, and they're up at 5 a.m. and they're going to bed at midnight, and you know, in a lot of cases, you know, you're loving every minute. That's right. You know, a lot of people right now are challenged to find motivation, to find themselves being motivated to, as I, you know, to get up each morning, put one foot in front of the other, try to do the right thing, try to, you know, raise the kids at the same time, maybe uh, running a, a, a team or being the leader of a team and such, or maybe a business as well. So. Well, what, what is your motivation? What gets you going? Oh, gosh. Um, especially right now, um, you know, sort of when the world has kind of stopped spinning a little bit. Yeah. Um, I try to, to cling to a couple of things that like there's a couple of running tapes in my head. And one of them is, you know, I'm never going to be defined by this setback. I'm going to be defined by my comeback. And so every day I keep saying to myself, okay, how can I, what right now to be so well prepared when the world's spinning again? And a lot of that revolves around like finding different ways to run my business or different sources of income or different ways to connect to my parents or, um, you know, lots of my back burner stuff that, I, that I've been needing to do but haven't done in terms of, you know, marketing my business. And I'm also working a lot at the fire station. And, um, you know, so I really, every day I'm saying, I'm going to be defined by my, sure. the other well, thing yeah. that I keep kind of saying to myself is, um, you know, everything that I need to succeed is within me right now. And it's still within me. It lives in me, all my background and skills and experience and everything I've done leading up to my successes before the world stopped spinning, all that stuff lives inside me and I have access to it on the other side. And so, whereas, you know, sort of feels like the universe has put us back to the start line, you know, in a lot of ways in our lives and our careers, um, you know, you're still going to be winning that race in a few months based on all of the great stuff you've done in the past and your experience and your drive. And you will be, you know, back at the front of that race again, you know, in no time. So um, it's within you and you're going to be great. Sure. Speaking of that, do, do, can the average person achieve greatness? Oh my gosh. Um, I'm an average person and I don't know, I guess people say I've done, I've done some great things, but there's nothing super special about me. Um, you know, I think a lot of greatness just comes from, well, th there's a couple things like greatness comes from two things that, that quiet perseverance, you know, doing those little things to prepare every single day, doing those little things your competitors might not, might not be doing, you know, doing the tiny things when nobody's looking to prepare to be great. But then greatness also comes from that courage to, to shatter the norm and do things that have never been done and to think totally outside the box and to innovate. So there's two different ends to that sort of courage. And, and um, in my brain, I call that GUTS, which is an acronym actually for um, going the distance, quietly persevering, unwavering in your patience and faith that you were meant to be successful. That's the first half, but then also taking calculated risks and shattering the norm. Yeah. So I think it's that sort of guts coming from the two different sides that, um, that ultimately makes a person great. Yeah, for sure. So, um, you know, you promote your book, How Winning Works, uh, as a guidebook for success. Tell us, tell us about that. Uh, well, the book, How Winning Works, came from our experience in these crazy ultra-endurance 10-day-long adventure races where you have you know, teams of four or five people, one has to be a man, one has to be a woman, so mixed gender teams, and a race director will ask you to meet them in the most remote place they can find on earth, and hand each team a set of maps and compasses and road rules, and then they say, ready, set, go, we'll see you guys in 600 to 1,000 miles, whichever team gets their first wins. 
And Incredible. you know, it's all non-motorized transportation, like kayaking, mountain biking, whitewater rafting. But one of the interesting rules and the most important rule that, that, that came from this sport and that led to my book was the fact that if you lost one teammate along the way, your entire team was disqualified. So it wasn't about, you know, winning these races, we thought it was going to be about, be about like who was the best athlete and who was the best mountain biker and who was the best navigator. And, but it really came down to not who was the best team member, but which team had the best teammates. And so what we learned over those years in winning those races at the highest levels is that it was all about creating that human synergy on our team. Mm -hmm. um, Cause we were never the best athletes but we were the best teammates. And we, were, we weren't just out there with each other like the other teams, we were out there for each other. So the book is all about those essential elements of human synergy. How do we create that totally cohesive team that consistently can win world championships, whether it's in the middle of a jungle in Borneo, you know, or, or you know, in your local business community. It's how do we as leaders create um, that human synergy. And it's actually an acronym for teamwork. So it's easy to remember, which is total commitment, empathy and awareness for teammates, adversity management skills, mutual respect, we thinking versus me thinking, ownership of the project, relinquishment of ego, which is a toughie for a lot of people, um, and kinetic leadership. As a frontline worker during the pandemic, what are some of the learnings that you've taken away? Oh, um, really importantly, it's a time for great kindness, honestly. Um, it, it, everyone in our station has been like so overly kind to each other, to our patients. Like it's kind of that moment in, in the world where you got to put all those little differences and things that don't matter, you know, those day to day things aside and just realize that like how you treat people in their toughest moments, whether it's our patients or whether it's each other in the station, this moment in time is something we will all remember for the rest of our lives. And you will remember how people treated you in your lowest moments. And so I think there's a real cognizance of that right now, you know, in our station, as well as with our patients, as well as just in the real world. I mean, people are waving to me. I'm, I'm like running in the horse trails by myself. And every time you see another person, we're waving at each other. We're, we're yelling, hello. You know, it's in that small, tiny way, you know, this moment of kindness is a, is a pretty cool thing. You know, that's a lesson I'm going to take with me out of this. It really is. You are an accomplished uh, book author, uh, motivational speaker. I'm sure you travel the world, you know, working with companies large and small and different organizations. What keeps you in the firehouse? Um, love of the game, I think. Uh, <laughs> it's, um, it's something I've done for, gosh, 21 years now and uh, been a full-time firefighter and I just can't leave. I, I, I don't want to leave. So I kind of fit the firefighting in, like the minute I come home from being on the road for however long, I'll, I'll go right to the station and I'll be there sure. for 24 or 48 or 72 hours wow. and then jump back, you know, jump back onto a plane. But, you know, it's, you know, I'm just so blessed to be able to do something I love, you know, yeah. all the way around. That, that's fantastic. And um, what should we focus on right now to reduce anxiety and fear and help us get through these challenging times? Um, I think a lot of, I think a lot of my strength right now, and I think a lot of people that I talk to is coming from some kind of higher sense of purpose, something bigger than ourselves, because I think it's a moment in time where we want to do something good. And so I think finding for everybody deep inside yourself, what is your why? What's your sense of purpose right now? And, and if you're trying to like stay quarantined and keeping yourself motivated for that, that higher sense of purpose becomes you know what, all of the older people or people with, you know, with issues in this community, I'm protecting them, you know, so that higher sense of purpose that you can latch on to. Um, if it's restarting your business, you know, that higher sense of purpose is I can't wait for the people that are counting on me, for the people that work for me, for our customers, you know, to, to get out there and show them that everything's going to be okay. Um, you know, to bring my business back for my family, you know, so I, I think that that a lot of our strength comes from that higher sense of purpose and finding something bigger than yourself to do it for. Sure. People that are watching you now and uh, that are familiar with you and and have seen your videos and read your books, um, they, they look at a person that say this, this person doesn't know anything about losing or failure. She's just a she's a consummate success. Have you had any failures in your life? Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> and, how did you, and how did you overcome them? I need, I need, I need to count them on. Um, yeah, of course. I mean, you know, if, if you're not failing, you're not trying, you know, in so many ways. 
Yeah. And, um, you know, so uh, I became a firefighter because I got fired um, from my from my first sales job. OK. Um, I've also had six hip replacements. Oh, my God. And you gotta um, be kidding. I've had four fail. You don't look <laughs> so you don't look 100 six. years old. <laughs> I know. Right. I, I started actually having them, you know, at a pretty youngish age. And um, it was all because I just ran out of cartilage, you know, so many years wow. of racing and Ironmans and, and 40 of these ultra distance endurance races. And um, I just had no more cartilage. And yeah. but wow. and but um, <laughs> that led me to a really a couple of really cool things. Um, one is um, after my first hip replacement, I realized I wasn't going to be a really good adventure racer anymore. But I kind of wondered to myself, what can I do with these outdoor skills and knowing what it brought to my life? Sure. And so um, I actually got the idea one day, like, what if we took these adventure skills and helped survivors of medical or traumatic setbacks live an adventurous dream as part of their recovery? Wow. Very and cool. And so I started a nonprofit called Project Athena, um, the Project Athena Foundation, where we that help survivors live an adventure. I'm glad you went there. Oh, look at me. Yeah, tell, <laughs> tell me all about that. All right, so um, so we help survivors live an adventurous dream as part of their recovery. Wow! And and basically, we take people who've had medical or traumatic setbacks, mm -hmm. and we train them to do these freaking crazy, awesome ultra endurance events. Like, not a lot of them are have never been athletes. Like, a lot of them are like this is the first athletic thing they've ever done in their life, and we yeah. train them to do something like um, hike across the Grand Canyon in one day. Wow. Or cool. um, kayak and ride their bikes from Key Largo to Key West, 120 miles, or walk a, walk a marathon, walk a double marathon. You know, we, I come up with all kinds of cool, crazy, you know, adventures and, <laughs> and we train people for four or five months before it. And then we put them out there with my team of adventure athletes, most of whom have had, you know, crazy setbacks of their own. Sure. And um, we surround them by great fundraisers. So anybody can come on these adventures and yeah. we all just go together as one big team. So it's like kind of, my ultimate perfect blending of what we learned in adventure racing and what I learned from having my hips replaced a million times and, um, and just accomplishing something amazing as one big team and helping people turn a setback into a comeback. And it literally changes people's lives to like find out they're capable of when they're in that phase, like had breast cancer or a traumatic injury and, and they're kind of coming out, but they don't know who they are right now. And um, we remind them that you are a badass endurance athlete on top of being an amazing survivor. Sure. Um, and now you have these 30 friends you're going to have for life. And uh, it really changes their like perspective on who they are. That's fantastic. And uh, how great is it, uh, as we mentioned in the opening, in the introduction, that you're a CNN hero. Tell us about that. Oh, that's like one of the coolest things that's ever happened. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I get. I don't even know how um, how they found us. I think one of our Athenas, you know, who are our survivors, wrote to them and said, "Hey, you got to be aware of this." Situation. And um, I, I remember, like, we're standing when I got the call from sure. folks saying, "You're one of our CNN heroes." And um, I just started, you know, because it felt like that the universe saying you you've done a good thing, you That's know. Right. And, and, um, you know, and literally like I'm getting goosebumps right now, just thinking about it, you know, right. it's, it's neat to, cause you know, it's a, it's cool. It's wonderful. Like to toil away in obscurity. Like we know we're doing a cool thing, right. but when like the universe recognizes it, it's yeah, it's really cool. Very cool. So, uh, Guinness world record holder, 10, 10 X, uh, Ironman, uh, triathlete, New York times, bestselling author, founder of your own foundation what's next for you? Like, what do you look down the road and say, man, I got to conquer this? What, what is that? Hmm. Well, in my, um, in my old age, <laughs> it's becoming, um, how, how many hips like, would that be in your old age? Two things, two things, I, two things I have on my, on my plate. Well, three, actually, I want to continue to grow Project Athena. Um, but there's also, um, I want to get my 24 hour world record back for flat water paddling. And, uh, there's another wow. race that I've been second place at five oh, times. You got to get that one. Right? Mile. <laughs> it's called the Missouri river 340. It's a 340 mile nonstop paddle from Kansas city to St. Charles down the Missouri <laughs> river. And I've been second place overall, not just like women's field, but like overall, um, out of 300 something solo racers five times. And it, you know, oh I don't know, it's like I want to give that maybe one more whack. And, um, but my, my future goal is um, I want to start an animal sanctuary. 
and in, in, in uh, your I spare gotta, time, I like when you're not fighting fires yeah. or <laughs> going down the river. Yeah. Yeah. You just yeah, don't know what I, to do. When right? I retire, that's my dream. <laughs> no, you have to rescue things. It's awesome. Like, I just want to give homeless animals just a place to be loved, like for, for the rest of their lives and continue, um, and continue Project Athena. Sure. You wouldn't, you wouldn't be like the new female tiger king or anything, tiger queen, would you? Would that... <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That show's freaking nuts. But I'll tell you what, it just brings some awareness, though. You know, yeah. it is bringing awareness, but it, it is also inspiring me, too, because, you know, there's a lot of craziness in, in this world and I want to have a place for those animals that need a place to go. But so yeah. it's actually inspired me in a weird way to like, to, you know, ensure that animals have this amazing, cool place to, you know, sure. to be, and to be happy. Well, you're an amazing young lady. I want to thank you so much for spending time with us here on the show. We very much appreciate it. We'd love to have you back uh, to talk more about this and, uh, and, and you just to, just to find out what you're taking on next. So thank you, Robin. Ben Acosta, thank you so much for joining us here on the show today. We very much, very much appreciate it. Oh my gosh, that was so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> You're the man. See how easy? You're like. <laughs> That's right. But I don't go down rivers and I don't bike 300 miles. So those, those things I don't no, do. No, but you darn good at Thank you for doing it. Yeah. That's for sure. So, but uh, this has been a real thank pleasure. You. Hopefully we can call on you again because uh, I, I know that this is going to get a lot of views on our, on our network. So thank you so much. Oh, right on. Yeah, definitely. I'll probably be right here in my kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where the rest of the world is. <laughs> That's right. All right. Thanks again. I really appreciate it.